Good morning. My name is Claudio Nicolet. I'm the manager of the customer support team uh, for Prevo. So I've been with the company for more than 23 years now. Uh, started at the factory, so uh, work on the work on the plant, uh, and then made my way up to service as customer support manager, and uh, now I'm managing the customer support team, so the eastern uh, team. So, uh, like, uh, I have five uh, customer support manager, like, uh, like here in my territory. So today, uh, I'll be talking about the service and maintenance. Can you guys hear me good? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes. All right. So stop me anytime. Questions? We'll uh, go through a couple of slides. So when it's down to maintenance, so we have a lot of questions. So where do we start when we're talking about maintenance on, on the vehicle? You know, we had 95, 2000, 2016, 2018, a lot of different generation, a lot of different components. So service and maintenance, of course, will change with you know all those differences. So we're gonna Start, talk about that. We're going to start to check with the VIN number, so the vehicle identification number, uh, how to read it on a Prevo vehicle, uh, how to access the Prevo technical publication site. So Eric uh, went there quickly, but we're going to do that. Uh, how to find your maintenance schedule for all the different uh, coaches you have, different uh, variant that you have. Uh, and then we do a quick look at the Prevo apps. We have some great apps now available. Uh, and then we'll look at that, and then we'll finish with a question and answer. All right? So, where do we start? So, I have the 2005, I want to I see my maintenance schedule for my vehicle. So, you have a nice 1924 Prevo. So, what here is my coach? What kind of engine? Do I have a Detroit engine? Do I have a Volvo engine? You know, transmission. What generation transmission do I have on my vehicle? <coughs> Right. So do I have a vehicle with fuel only or fuel with DEF, diesel exhaust fluid? So all of those, so the different exhaust systems, so all of those give you a different maintenance schedule, right? Because they're all equipped differently. So where do we start? Is there something on your vehicle that tells us all of the information? VIN number, exactly. So where's the VIN number located? So we have a couple of places through the year that's changed a bit. So we can have it, depending on the year, we can have it here on the left-hand side driver post, okay? On the older vehicle, we had it here, right by the lens. You can see it through the windshield, which looks uh, just like this. They're here, so you got the manufacturer VIN number. And then we have also this right next to the driver. So it's either by the side of the driver, depending on the year, or behind the driver. So you have this nameplate with the full VIN, and then the axle rating and the tire pressure. Okay, so this is in every, uh, every vehicle. Okay, you got a next uh, extreme picture, but the H is exactly the same, same, uh, same location as well. All right, so what do we get with that VIN number? A lot of information. So we know the first three digits where the coach was manufactured. So we have two manufacturer plants, but on the motorhome side, it's only one in St. Clair. So all of your VIN will start with two PC because they're built at the main plant in Quebec, St. Clair. Okay? Then here, we have where you see the H, so the fourth digit, we have what type of conversion we have. Is it a seated coach? Is it a motorhome? Is it the, uh, on the X platform, on the H platform? So this is where we find that information with the fourth digit, okay? Then the fifth digit, we have, if we have a slide-down structure or no slide-down structure, that uh, gives us that there. And then the next one will be what type of uh, engine. So all of the new uh, vehicle comes with a Volvo engine, so that would be a three for Volvo engine, and then so on. So. Really important for us, and that's the reason why when you're calling one of us, the first thing we ask you is, what is your VIN number? So the important part for us is your sequence number and in the year. So most of the time, we're going to ask you for the last eight digit. Okay, so the last eight digit will give us the E here is the year model. So the, the year model manufacturer of the chassis, okay? And then 
the last four digits, which is the sequence number. So once we get that information, we can pull the information exactly for your vehicle, for your specific vehicle. Okay? Good so far? All right. So, like in this example, we got a model year E. Okay? So on the next page, what we put there is what is the that digit. So we got an E, so that would be a 2014 uh, year model for the chassis. Okay? So this is common to the industry. The car industry looks to use the same. So, so right now we're producing 2018 and 2019 models, so they're, they're going to be J and K at that uh, location. Okay? Questions so far? Good? All right. Uh, so if we look at it, we, we made that maintenance information back in 2000. So, for example, here we got a T5001, so T will be in 1996. Okay? Again, this is, uh, this is very important, and this is why we ask you that information when you, when you call us for help. All right, so once we got your VIN number, now we can go and pull the, the correct maintenance schedule or any information about your vehicle. So we got an example here of a 2000, year 2000. So you see the different mileage bar. So it's really easy to, to read. Basically, you have all of the different sections. And then we'll go online and look at another one earlier, later on. But you have all of the different sections and what needs to be done at a certain months or mileage. Okay, so depending if you're doing a lot of mileage or not too many miles, so you can go by months or uh, by miles. Okay, so if we look at the 2000, for example, engine oil change and filter, we got 12 months or 12,500 miles. This is where your oil change should be. Okay, so if you do less than 12,000 miles a year, then you will do your oil change once a year. Okay? And then all of the different sections uh, will are, are stated there. So like for fuel filter, again, it's uh, every 12 months and 12,000. So it's the same time as the uh, oil change interval. All right? So this is for 2000. So we just took that as an example. 2018, we changed the style uh, a bit. So again, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's item by item. So if we go back to the engine, See, we've got our engine oil and filter change. Again, we've got 12 months, or see now we have A, B, and C. Those are, if you go online, and then you click on that, those are hyperlinked. The reason is we have different type of oil that you can use. So depending on what type of oil, the oil change will change according to the oil you're using. Okay, so as an example, if I click on the A, I have a pop-up that's going to come back here, and then I have my engine oil, so the A, B, and C, it tells me what type of oil I can use for my oil change, okay? <clears throat> so, engine oil type A will be the Volvo Premium Motor Oil, BDS 4.5, and then B is the approved BDS 4.5, and then the C, it will be just a regular oil change with the BDS 4 oil type, okay? So the schedule changed a bit, and again, it's uh, according to the year vehicle that you have and model. Okay? So again, when, we call, when you call us, we get your VIN number, so we're gonna go directly to the website. So our website is prevocar.com, so www.prevocar.com. When you get, I'm sorry. When you get to the, oops, I'm sorry. When, when you get to the main page, so this is our main page for the prevocar.com, you have different sections here. Okay, one of the sections is parts and service. So when you click on parts and service, okay, this screen will come up, and then you have technical publication, that's right there. So we can uh, click on technical publication, and then here's the technical publication side. So again, really, easy step by step. So from there, we have access to a lot of different uh, information for each of the vehicles. 
So we have access to wiring diagram, pneumatic diagram, technical manual. So in our case today, technical manual, this is where we're gonna find the main, the complete maintenance manual. Uh, owner manual is also there, so uh, always accessible there. There's no password, it's an open website. Okay? So I'll show you, I'll show you live actually. So I'm going to click on gravelpaw.com, and there it is. So if we go to Arts and Service, and then Technical Publication. <clears throat> right, so if we go to Technical Manual, okay, right here we can go by like a general search, like a vehicle family which is going to be an H345 or, or an X345 or a vehicle model. Okay, we have all of the different models that we build, but we also have the VIN specific. So if you look at unit number, unit number is the year model and then the last form, the sequence of your VIN number. Okay, so if we take an example, so I, I enter J, And then, I, and then I hit search. So I don't have to fill any of the other field. I just use the VIN number, so it's VIN specific. And then I hit search. Then I will have, in this case, I have multiple uh, results because I have French and English, okay, manuals. So I have operator manual, maintenance manual, and then so on, okay? Any of you guys have a VIN handy that you know? Because this is for a seated coach, so if I can use one of your VIN. Do you know the last four of your VIN by any chance? Uh, no? Tokyo 2389. 056. Oh, let's go back again. Yeah. Do you know what, uh, what year is it? Oh, you got the whole bin. So that would be 2005, so 50056. And then if I click on search, then I got two IM found. So I have your maintenance manual, and then I also have your owner manual. So owner manual will have all of the detail for the safe, safe operation of the vehicle, dashboard layout, and stuff like that, okay? So in our case today, we're going to go to maintenance manual. So you see we have file list 19. So there's 19 items in the maintenance manual. So it's just like you have your big maintenance manual, which is about probably that thick, and then you have all of the section inside. Okay? So you can download the complete manual and then save it to your computer or your, your laptop. But we can also pull one section at a time. So if I do file list right here, Okay, I got my 19 item found. So I'll just go down the list. Okay, so you have all of the different sections of the maintenance manual. So in our case today, we're going to look at, if we go down, lubrication section. This is where you're going to find your maintenance schedule for your vehicle. So right now we're looking at the 2005 uh, H3 vehicle. So. So lubrication, and then if I click on the, on the logo I here, so I will be able to either email, download, or just open it. I'm sorry, right here. Okay, so this is the complete lubrication section for this specific vehicle. So if we go down, So we got a lot of information about the maintenance of uh, this specific vehicle. Okay, 
And we'll go down. So all of the different service point on the vehicle. Okay. So this is looking underneath underneath the uh, the structure basically. All the lubricating points. So if we keep going, even you have suspension in there, and then you have all of the different component numbers that will be in your maintenance schedule. So if I just keep going, and I'll get to the maintenance schedule, then it's telling you all of the uh, things to check. So when you want to do a maintenance on, on this uh, vehicle, the, di the different lubrication, so what type of oil should I use, what type of coolant should I use, it's all part of that document. Okay? And then lastly, when we get down, we're going to get to your schedule. So there's even part numbers or filter inside and such. And then we get down to the maintenance schedule. So again, this is for this specific vehicle. Okay, so if we're looking at a 2010, 2012 with a Volvo engine, different component on the vehicle, different generation transmission, of course, the schedule will also be different. Okay, yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Can you share with the other owner this to the coach and how we had it service so we can't share that? Okay, the question is if we're uh, if 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 he's if he has a uh, used coach for sale and then we want to know the history of that vehicle. So what was done on maintenance, uh, warranty and stuff like that. The answer on our side is no. We cannot share that because it it belongs to the previous owner. That was that's that's his. Although, if, if you're the owner of the, car, the, the, the vehicle and you want the history of your vehicle, that we can give you that. But not previous order. Exactly. And you can share how the yeah. previous owner had so That's right. We can share with the owner, and then if you want to share with the new owner the, or the uh, purchaser, then you can. But we cannot share to, uh, to, to any other people. Yes, that's correct. The question is if the maintenance was done at another facility, right? No, it's not going to show on our side because it only the stuff that was done at any of our service center. If you go to Florida or, or California, that's all going to show in, in our system. But not any other, like if it was done at a, uh, a Volvo service provider, for example, it will not show in our uh, records. Not on our, no. But if they do any warranty work on your coach at the Volvo service provider, yes, they, it will show on our system. Okay, did everybody answer uh, heard the question? Yeah? Okay. All right, yes, sir. Same thing true with Detroit Diesel, if you have your oil change there, it doesn't go to Same thing, yeah. Yeah, it stays in their system, in their own system. That's correct. Yeah. Question so far? Good? All right. So pretty clear, easy to get uh, access to that. So again, each coach is VIN specific. So just go in there just like I did with the year model and then the last four digit of your uh, VIN number. And then you'll get the right information for every, uh, every coach. So it's, it's really specific to you. <coughs> Okay, try to find here. Yeah, one question about that maintenance. So yes, sir. Yep. You're now the owner of it. You still can't get the maintenance record of the prior owner. No, not without if, this permission. Without, without this permission, yeah. Okay. We can share it with the previous uh, owner. Yeah, okay. yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, privilege information to the owner of the vehicle. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any question on how to access information from the website? We're good? Yeah, question over there. Why did you switch from a 1540 on Detroit to a 1030 oil on the, the Volvo? Yeah. Did you all hear the, uh, the question was, uh, we were with Detroit at 1540 weight oil, and then now we're at 1030. So all of the Volvo engine 
about actually the first the first generation of Volvo engine also had 15 uh, W40 oil, but now we we switched to 1030. And basically, Volvo designed their engine with 10 W30, starting with the US 10 emission. Quality of the oil is much better. Uh, you get a you get an easier uh, start in the winter. So you guys don't really have that issue because uh, probably not in the uh, you probably don't keep your coach in the winter where it's cold. But uh, on a seated coach, it's really uh, it's really a good uh, a good fit. And um, yeah, so uh, it's easy start and then uh, fuel economy also. Better fuel economy with 1030 than 1540. Uh, Volvo engines, Volvo engine, yes, you can go back to you can go 1030 on all Volvo engine. Uh, Detroit, I'm not 100 percent sure. We can take that question. I'm not sure if they if they take the 1030 on the Detroit. Okay. Yeah, yeah mostly 1540, I believe, on the Detroit. So, yeah. Okay. So good with this. Yeah. All right, so uh, Prevo apps. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, Android or iPhone based, we have four apps for you now. Okay, the first app is called the Prevo Tool. This is an app, it's free, it's free. Uh, it's a great app because there's a lot of stuff and I'll show you what, what's on that app. We have the Prevo Service Locator. Okay, again, it's another free app. Wherever you are in North America or in Canada or in, in the U in United States, uh, push up a uh, push up a button. You can find the closest either Prevo service center or Volvo service provider. So again, Volvo service provider. We just talked a, a little bit about that. Volvo service provider. It's a Volvo truck dealer that has a, that has signed a contract with Prevo to do service. Some of them will do just engine and transmission service. Some of them will go extra and then do the rest of the vehicle. So it depends, it's their choice basically if they want to do just engine work or if they want to do more. To become a service provider, they have to have training not only on the Volvo side, of course they do their, they have their own training for the Volvo engine, but they have to have training with us as well. You know how our electrical system works and, and you know it's a, it's a couple of days of training just on the critical product. Yes, sir. So Volvo does not service Detroit, so people can Volvo because it's a Detroit shop. Yes, so yeah, most of the Volvo dealer don't don't serve Detroit. That's right. So with the Detroit, yeah, it's still go to the the, the Detroit uh, network. All the more people who do who do both. So. Yeah. Yeah. Did you expand on that just a bit because each one of the service centers has a different different level of uh, maintenance? Uh, Yes, that's correct. So uh, basically, level of service in our home service center, we do service on all of, all of the engines. So Detroit uh, can be an 1892, a Series 60 Detroit, we do service on all of them. The only thing is with warranty work. If the engine was still under warranty, at the time now we don't have any more Detroit under warranty, but at the time we couldn't do, we couldn't do warranty on the Detroit engine, because Detroit wants to do their own warranty. Big difference with the Volvo engine. The Volvo engine, we do everything. We do everything. So on the Volvo engine, we do service, but we also do warranty. So it's a one-stop uh, shopping. We do everything there. Okay. Questions? Good. Okay. So uh, critical service locator again. Another free uh, free app, <coughs> and I'll show you the. I'll show you that to you. Prevo delivery. It's a, it's a, it's mostly for us, but it can be helpful also. It basically allows you to take a picture of a component. Let's say we're talking on the phone, or you can take a picture and you can actually write on the picture and send it to us by email. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice app to have, uh, and it's not only to send stuff to us. You can share information, uh, you know, to, to anybody by writing on the picture and send it to uh, send it. This is what we call the Prevo delivery track. We actually did that for our own purpose, because we deliver new coaches to customers, and then when it's time to do a report, we want them to take note, and they take a picture of something that went wrong, and we want them to, we want them to show us what, was, uh, what they want to show in the picture, basically. And then our latest app is the Prevo Code app. So um, 
reading engine code, uh, transmission code, the APS code. Basically, that app will allow you to enter the numeric code and then gives you the uh, what's the code for. Okay, what is the <coughs> the code for? That's the only one that costs. Yes, this one is nine ninety nine. Yeah, the rest of the apps are free of charge, but this one yeah, is nine ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> All right, so so a quick look at, at the, the different app. This is the Prevo Tool app. So this is a really good one to have because it's got a lot of information in that one, one app. There is a photo gallery called PASS. PASS is our Prevo <coughs> Action Service System uh, line. So it's the 24-7 line that we have. Of course, our the team of server, uh, customer support managers is available for you. But if you can't reach anybody, you can call the Prevo <coughs> Action Service line and then they'll reach They'll do the phone call for you, basically, and try to find a service rep that can, uh, can help you for any technical help. Okay, so just with a push of a button, you can access uh, this system. Service locator is basically the same. It directs you to that service locator uh, map. Okay. Parts, if you need to order any parts, uh, that uh, gives you access directly to the uh, <coughs> server desk. We've got the contact, is basically the contact part that shows all of the different customer support managers with their, their space. And also, it has all of our home service centers, so it gives you access to the, uh, uh, all the addresses, phone number of the, uh, of the service centers. Are you listed? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, are you listed? Yes, I am. Yes, I am listed there. Okay. So, and so on. I mean, there's a lot of information in that one, uh, one app manual. Basically, it directs you to, to the technical publication site, just where we went for your uh, owner manual, maintenance manual, which directs you directly there. Yes, sir. Is there a difference between your brand and Oh, this, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that just in a uh, few, uh, few seconds. Uh, so, this is the manual, and then wine diagram, air diagram. On our site, when we need to do diagnostic, it's a quick, uh, quick access to that. Okay, so great tool. Uh, to, uh, to order, and again, it's free, free of charge. The service locator map, you see different colors in the map. Uh, basically, the P are our own favorite service center, okay? The red and the green are the Volvo service provider. Volvo service provider can be level one or level two. As I mentioned, some will do only engine work, maintenance, some will do the whole coach. This is where you have your level one and two. See level one, you just have the engine uh, diagram, so they will only do maintenance, basically, on the engine and warranty work. The level two uh, service provider will do into suspension work, air conditioning in some uh, some cases. So, and it's listed when you click on the if you click on the location, it gives you address, phone number, uh, hour of operation. And then what type of work you Okay. Sir, will yes. the level two providers work on a Detroit diesel coach? Uh, those are Volvo service provider. Some of them can do, but not all of them. Most most of them not. Suspension or something, would they do that? <laughs> uh, level two, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, level two, it doesn't matter if it's a Detroit, it has a Detroit or a Volvo engine, yeah, they can have a Okay. Uh, the app is pretty, it's pretty easy. You can either push that brown circle, and it'll get you to. If your phone is turned on, that it can share a location. It'll get you right where you are, and then show you all of the service location around where you are. You can also type your location, so you can type a, uh, a city and state, and then it'll pull up where that city and state is, and then show you the location. Okay, and then you can also uh, magnify the map or get closer right here by push of a button. And then uh, each location, again, you can push on them and then it shows you all the information about that service provider in that particular location. Okay? Any question on that? No? And then the last one, again, is the code reader I was talking about. So basically, you would uh, enter your, your code that you can pull from the, the, the dashboard uh, and then enter the code number and then they'll give you a description of the code. 
have an example just to show you on the left. So just as an example, we got a code P111. It tells you that's the engine fluid temperature that's going to be high. So you know what the, what the, the description of that call code. Code that we've talked about it for a couple of days actually, because there is different format code depending on year, vehicle, and all that. Uh, so if you have a different format, again, uh, pretty much the same, uh, the same uh, information, but different code format. Uh, here, I give you an example. So if I click on uh, this uh, service locator number one, I got the ball with plug uh, in West Palm Beach, and if I would have to press the little I button. And I'll give you the information about that uh, service location. All right. So I just want to show you here. I'll go back to the website. <coughs> so right from the website, you can also go at the bottom here. And then Go to tool. You have from a laptop. You can also have the same same thing as if you were on your phone or your iPad, and have the access to the same information right here. Okay, so if you like the look of this, you can put that as your shortcut on your uh, laptop, and have access to all of that at the same uh, at the same place. It's the same as if you had it on your uh, handheld device, so you can put a service up here, and it'll come up with a map. This <laughs> is all of the service, uh, all of the green and, uh, and the red are all of the service providers within Canada and the US. And again, if I click on the peak, <coughs> I have the south main view, I got the get direction or more information about this location, so right from this app. Okay. Good. Yes. Any questions? <coughs> so what? You need some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. On the parts for the mouth of this, you guys have got the So you have a golf cart? I don't have a huge guy with them. I like to haul mine the same way. Okay. So you have it hooked up to the trailer head, basically? They attach it to the frame. To the frame? It, it really did, I mean, we're not doing this ourselves, so it has to be engineered to, to, for the weight of the, of, uh, of the gun part to make sure it's, uh, it's rigid. What's your... Yeah, and it's very minimal. You're going to change the writing. Yeah. Quality of that code because you've got some hanging back out with that. Correct. Right. So you extend the length of the, the vehicle plus more weight mm -hmm. behind the axle. About so yeah. well, you put a thousand pounds more down on your rear, rear axle. Get an avalanche and tell it to put the golf cart back here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Steer tires? They would take weight off of the steer tires. No, yeah. 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 Yeah.
caution, more caution. <coughs> they are not problem with the air system. The air system should be keeping up with your, uh, you know, the very cues that you have. Came right back up. Came right back up. Did you pump the brake up? You know. Or, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, really importantly, going down grade, if you approach this equipped with a recovery or an engine brake, uh, of course, use that as much as you, uh, as, you, as you can. Yeah, keep an eye on the temperature. If you, if you have a, a transmission recovery, also, it uh, will warm up your transmission oil temperature. Uh, so keep an eye on that as well. Yes, sir. Well, we're seeing more and more of the super singles on over the road. Trucks. Yes. Will we ever see that replace the doubles on the trailer? We have it on the seated coach market as, a, as an option. <coughs> uh, some customers are taking it uh, on the motor home. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if it is available. I don't see it here. You go there. We can ask him. I'm not even sure if that's uh, optional on the motor home uh, coaches. I see. But on the seated coach, we do have it uh, available. We, yeah. We've got a seated question. Wide base tire, do you are we on the tomorrow? Did we do a different question? Uh, we have had it available. Yeah, okay. you lose uh, capacity. You have to wait capacity on it for the moment. Okay. 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 We have, we have uh, the next uh, presenter will be visually, so we can ask her. <laughs> yeah, right there. She, she knows a lot of all tires. So. Yeah. Any question? Yeah? I don't know, the following apps, do any of them have the ability to maintain a service log? Maintain a what? Service log. In other words, you log in your service to, to keep that data. No, no, we don't have any log, any uh, apps for that. Unfortunately, but there is plenty of app on there that you can, you can do that though. But we don't have anything, anything like this for now. Yes, sir. Fuel cap. Yep. Two pieces of lead inside, and I think this might cost one touch On the fuel cap. Not on the DEF cap, right on the fuel cap? Mm -hmm. It's on the fuel cap. You've got two plates that will come with a lead flow tank. Okay. Every time I take mine loose, look at that lead is gone. I don't want to move it unless I let college do it. Okay. That's the thing, you don't want to finish. I'm not too sure. Are you familiar with that, Mr. Cap? No. Good question. We'll take that. Did you take that uh, question, Terry? Uh, All right. And again, we have your, uh, your JB. If you have any unanswered questions, We'll make sure we have that. We'll send that to, uh, to JB so he can send the information to you guys. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm too. I know I have to do my caddy and automatic and get the brake up a little more. I don't know if he can use it. Yeah, I don't think it's even available to uh, OPI. Oh, yeah. Now, every engine would have already told me to use it. If your approach was, if you had the engine, uh, I think I'm saying maybe or generation. Yeah, the engine generation that can do that. Yes. But the engine now nowadays is only one or two things. Yeah. Back there. Yep. Yeah. 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 I've just bought a 2009 Prevost, and I was wondering if you have any availability to print out a detailed service history on a chassis which you purchased used. Oh. No, uh, history, history you talked about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a, a when, it's, when it's taken to Prevo for service, yeah. give us the detail of what they did when they serviced it. Uh, they, I've, I've gotten a listing of uh, from the Jacksonville Center of all the times it was in service, but it doesn't it tells you very little about what was done. Yeah, exactly. The, the, this information is proprietary to the previous owner. We cannot share that information. But I'm the owner now. Why would he care? Yeah, but we can share the information from the time you purchased the vehicle with nothing. It's, it's, it's sensitive information. So, so the previous owner, if you were to call the guy, right? Yes. Yeah. You can hear anything? God. Please. Yeah, if the previous owner would have called us and get the information, we can share with you, this is fine. But we cannot share information from the previous owner. 
for a new, uh, new owner. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be a good thing to talk to the owner that you're purchasing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 The question was fuel additive. Yeah, fuel additive, uh, especially if you go in my country, <laughs> uh, like we had like the, this this winter, <laughs> which is your country too. So, uh, like during Christmas and New Year, we had a cold snap like uh, we we never seen, and then we had issue with uh, fuel gelling up and stuff. Yes, additive is a good uh, uh, good thing to do in those cases for sure. Yeah, the old sulfur now, 2006. Yeah, the old sulfur fuel. Uh, there is an additive also for, yeah, but the sulfur basically is, is everywhere now. So, but, and then, like in, in Quebec, the fuel that you buy already have additive in it. But if you're leaving, you know, for a place where it's warm and then get down where it's cold, uh, you may want to have additive before you. You don't, don't get an empty your tank before you get there. Yeah. yeah so it doesn't <laughs> shell up and uh, an addition. I feel as if it's a little sulfur now. The rolling coaches in 2001, 2006, the fuel additive may not be the sulfur. No. 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 Yeah, yeah, no, I understand your question, but no, 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 not that I know of it. No. Is that gelling additive uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Volvo will, it's a Detroit, so Detroit, I think they were B20 for Detroit, so older Detroit, B20, so 20, B20 is 20% 20 uh, mix of biodiesel, with the newer engine is B5, so the maximum that Volvo will allow is B5, so 5% by biodiesel mix, okay, on older engine, on Detroit, B5, <coughs> 